Let's look at linear transformations in a descriptive statistics setting. We'll look at what a linear transformation is and its effect on the summary statistics. Let's look at an example first. Suppose we wish to convert a set of temperature measurements from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Here's the relationship between these two measurement scales. The temperature in degrees Celsius is 5 over 9 times the temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32. And if we multiply through by 5 over 9, we could write it like this. This is an example of a linear transformation, where we are multiplying by a constant and or adding a constant. Here, in the general case, I'm going to let x represent the original variable and x star represent the variable after a linear transformation. You might see notation calling this y instead of x star. a and b are the additive and multiplicative constants, respectively. Linear transformations come up very frequently. We're often adding a constant, or multiplying by a constant, or both. For example, when changing measurement scales from inches to centimeters, changing exam scores from points to percentages, or including a bonus mark, changing currencies, etc. Even z-scores, which we discussed earlier and will return to along the way, are an example of a linear transformation. One important concept is the effect of a linear transformation on the summary statistics. Let's see if we can visualize that before looking at a few formulas. Suppose we have a sample of three observations, 3, 4, and 5, represented by these yellow dots on this number line. What are the mean and standard deviation? Well, it's straightforward to see that the mean, the average of these three values, is 4. And it turns out that the standard deviation is 1. The sample standard deviation of three consecutive integers is 1. I just happen to know that, but you can verify that for yourself with a calculator or software. Now what happens if we add a constant to each of these three values? If we added 7, for example, we'd end up with the values of 10, 11, and 12. Here the yellow dots represent the original observations, and the red dots represent the values if we added 7 to each one. We've shifted the values 7 units to the right. Here the new mean is 11. The average of 10, 11, and 12 is 11. And that's just the original mean shifted 7 units right. But the values have the same spread, the same variability, and the standard deviation of these three values of 10, 11, and 12 is 1, the same as the standard deviation of the original values. The same idea holds for any additive constant. Suppose we subtract 10 from the original values, which is the same as adding minus 10, of course. Then the values shift to the left 10 units, and we end up with the values minus 7, minus 6, and minus 5. These three values have a mean of minus 6. The original mean shifts 10 units to the left, but the standard deviation stays the same. The standard deviation is still 1. This idea holds for other measures of center and variability as well. If we add a constant to each value, all we are doing is shifting the distribution of those values to the right or to the left. Measures of central tendency like the mean, median, and mode, will change by that constant. But this additive constant will not change any measure of variability. If we add the same constant to every one of the observations, every measure of variability, such as the variance, standard deviation, range, interquartile range, will all stay the same. What if we multiply by a constant? Well, suppose we start out once again with our original values of 3, 4, and 5. Recall that these have a mean of 4 and a standard deviation of 1. And suppose we multiply each value by 3. Then the new values are 9, 12, and 15. The mean of 9, 12, and 15 is 12, which is just 3 times the original mean. How about the new standard deviation? Well, first of all, we can see visually that the variability is greater. The numbers are spread out more, so the standard deviation is going to be greater. I'll let you use your calculator or software to verify that the new standard deviation is 3, which is 3 times the old standard deviation. So multiplying each value in the data set by 3 resulted in the standard deviation being multiplied by 3. Now hold on to that notion for a minute. And now let's suppose we multiplied by minus 3 instead. 
then the new values would be minus 15, minus 12, and minus 9. The new mean would be minus 12, which is minus 3 times the old mean. But what about the standard deviation? Well, if we calculate the sample standard deviation of minus 15, minus 12, and minus 9, we find that the standard deviation is 3, again. It wasn't the old standard deviation multiplied by minus 3, it was the old standard deviation multiplied by positive 3, or in other words, the absolute value of minus 3. Now the hand-waving explanation, a strong explanation, but hand-waving nonetheless, is that the variability of the values is the same, whether we multiply by 3 or minus 3. We can see that in this plot, or by looking at the values the standard deviation got multiplied by the absolute value of the multiplicative constant. We also know a standard deviation cannot be negative, so there's no way we could have multiplied by minus 3. That simply wouldn't work. But mathematically, how it works out is that the standard deviation gets multiplied by the absolute value of the multiplicative constant. I'll put a link in the description to my video proof of this, for those that are interested. It's not very difficult to show. Now what about the sample variance? The standard deviation is the square root of the variance, and the variance is the square of the standard deviation. For the original observations, the variance is 1. When we multiply by 3 or minus 3, the standard deviation is 3, so the variance is 3 squared, or 9. As we'll see formally in a minute, the new variance is the square of the multiplicative constant times the old variance. Let's summarize what we've learned here. If we apply a linear transformation, then to find the mean after the transformation, we can apply that linear transformation to the original mean. While the effect on the mean will be more important for us, the same notion holds for the median as well. Under a linear transformation, the new median is the transformation applied to the old median. To find the new standard deviation, we ignore the additive constant, since additive constants do not affect any measure of variability, and find that the new standard deviation is the absolute value of the multiplicative constant times the old standard deviation. The new variance is the square of the multiplicative constant times the old variance. Let's revisit our temperature example and crunch some numbers. Once again, here's the relationship between temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius. Here are the summary statistics for the 31 daily high temperatures from Pearson International Airport in Toronto last July. The mean, median, standard deviation, and variance are given in degrees Fahrenheit, even though we typically express these things in Celsius up here in the Great White North. Suppose we want to find these summary statistics in Celsius. We could simply convert each one of the 31 temperature measurements to Celsius, then calculate these summary statistics once again. That would work, of course. But we can also find them from this given information and the concepts we learned today. So let's do that. To find the mean in degrees Celsius, we simply apply the linear transformation to the old mean. The new mean is minus 160 over 9 plus 5 over 9 times the old mean of 86.6, and we end up with 30.3 degrees Celsius when rounded to one decimal place. That same concept holds for the median. To find the new median, we simply apply the linear transformation to the old median. Here that works out to 30.7 degrees Celsius. For the standard deviation, recall that the additive constant doesn't matter. Additive constants don't affect any measure of variability. The multiplicative constant does matter, and for the standard deviation, we multiply the absolute value of the multiplicative constant. The absolute value of 5 over 9 is just 5 over 9, so our new standard deviation is 5 over 9 times 5.2, or 2.89. I'm giving the standard deviation to two decimal places, so we don't have any possibly confusing rounding error when comparing this to the variance in a moment. The variance of the temperatures in Fahrenheit is 5.2 squared, or about 27 degrees Fahrenheit squared. 
I'm going to leave it as 5.2 squared here, as it might make the relationship a little easier to see. We can find the variance of the measurements in Celsius in two different ways. We can square the standard deviation that we just found, and by that logic, the new variance must be 5 over 9 squared times 5.2 squared. We could also remember that when we multiply by a constant, the variance gets multiplied by the square of that constant. So here, the new variance is 5 over 9 squared times our old variance. But that is, of course, what we just found when we squared the new standard deviation. In the end, the variance to two decimal places is 8.35. So that's the effect of a linear transformation on these summary statistics. Note that these rules apply to linear transformations and not necessarily to other transformations. For example, we couldn't find the mean of the square roots of some values by taking the square root of the mean. It doesn't work that way. From time to time, it's going to be important for us to know the effect of additive and multiplicative constants on the mean, standard deviation, and variance. This comes up for us in a number of different settings. That's it for now.